Alrighty, there we go. It's about time. I've missed seeing this. M42. The Orion Nebula. Oh, I have to change the clocks on this. It says 709, but it's not. It should be 609. Alrighty, well, hello there. Here we are on Wednesday, November 4th, I believe, 2020, at possibly 6.11 a.m. <laughs> I don't think I changed the clock back on this monitor, recorder, so yeah, it should be 6.11. And we're facing the southwest sky, and up there, those dusty bands are the Orion Nebula, M42. And it's getting too light out. We do have a the moon up, and it's getting quite early. Um, but I got some pictures, and hopefully, we can bring the nebula in better. And there we go at 5x here. We're on the Canon R8 camera, the Astro camera, and it won't make sense to do a 30x because it'll look horrible <laughs> but anyway um we have a new gadget yet again <laughs> that telescope there was quality problems with it so it did get shipped back but I do have another one here it arrived yesterday so we're still trying to get to know each other <laughs> whoa check out that that's cool so big it looked like it could have been the uh, ISS. I don't know. I'd have to check. When I go in 713. Well, no, it's not. 613. I don't know. Anyway, I didn't bring a watch or a clock out with me. But anyway, this is a William Optics GT71 that should stand for Gran Turismo <laughs> 71. It's an APO triplet refractor. And don't ask me what all that stuff means. But <laughs> now the telescope is 420 millimeters, but I do have the flattener reducer on, so it should make it 336, I do believe. And it moves it down from f5.9 to f4.7. And I took some pictures yesterday of the telescope itself, and these gloves, yeah, I have these gloves on backwards. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's quite cold out here. It's nearly freezing. Um, but yeah, I lost uh, track of what I was attempting to say. Oh, I think it was, uh, I was try I'm trying to fill a hole in my lens lineup since I sold so much of that gear off. We already know that the Canon 800 millimeter with the uh, 2x extender on there and gets the zoomed in footage pretty well not maybe not quite telescope quality but still it's passable <laughs> and of course I do have my wide angle but I missed this uh, middle range here and I've been looking at camera lenses but I tell you what those things are so freaking expensive it's pretty much ridiculous. So even though um, I do want to try this without the reducer on there, but not tonight, not when it's so cold out. <laughs> All right, now. It's hard to get it back to serious. That's the one I had it aligned to originally. Where are you, baby? I'm guessing this is it up here. Doesn't look as bright as I thought it would be. And a nice feature this telescope has inside the dust cover, there's a Batnoff mask. Very ingenious on their part. 
So we can see those spikes there. To show that we are, looks like we have a spot on alignment. That's cool to see. <laughs> Thing is, it doesn't look like serious. <laughs> It's getting so bright outside that I can't really see. Come on, baby. I mean, I suppose it could be it. Just does not look like serious, does it? But it is the brightest one up there. So that's not our flashy serious. I'd love to see, but... Hmm. I'm going to move this. Where are you, buddy? <laughs> You're around here somewhere. be a moon over there in the western sky high up. I'm not sure what that star is right next to it. But there we go. I do love the focuser here on the telescope. It has a dual focus, one for coarse and one for fine adjustments. That's so much easier to use than uh, trying to dial in the focus with a camera telephoto lens. It looks like it's coming out pretty good. We're at the 5X. All right, I'm happy. My main goal here tonight was to uh, come out and get the Orion Nebula. And hopefully it came out. We could see it in the video. And, and I did take some pictures, but I also did a little video clip and we'll see if that even works with aligning and stacking who knows <laughs> but with the setup I have here this is as far as we can go in we're at the 5x here so 336 times 5 whatever that is probably nearing 1600 1680 something like that now I did mess around with it last night uh, with Mars Jupiter and Saturn but it's difficult with those guys. I do want to zoom in, and so I ended up scrapping doing a video because, well, it wouldn't have been much fun to see some tiny little dots here. <laughs> you know, I want it to be enjoyable so we could see something decent instead of a tiny speck. But this lens is not meant for that. Like I said, it's meant to fill a hole in my mid-range here. Anyway, I think that's going to do it there. Go back down to regular view. Brighten up the scene. We can see that star over there. Whew. That's almost the color of the sky because it is pretty bright out here. And there we go. There is Venus. Yeah, there's Venus. I could try to get his face in. Yeah, I think I'd need a filter for this one. As Venus is heading up, up, and away. Yeah. No matter what I change it to, it needs a filter. And now we're having our morning gray sky. The only two things I can see are the moon and Venus. And the sun about to rise somewhere. Anyway, there's not going to be much to see here, but hopefully Orion came out and, and the moon. I think those are the only two <laughs> that might come out decent. So wherever you are, I hope you're doing well. All right, I'm going to wish you all a great morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is, wherever you are. So, I believe it's 6.40 a.m. 
up here in chilly northeastern Ohio. Bye now.